Hey, welcome to my review of the JG Aurora A5S FDM 3D printer. Now you might say, Greg, it doesn't look like you're holding a 3D printer in your hand. No, but I am holding some of my test prints off the, uh, this JG Aurora printer. And anyone who watches my channel knows I've never ever printed a test print. I go straight to something that, you know, would test any machine to its limits. Uh, I went to a, uh, here we have a four part print. Each part was over 24 hours. That's my test. Not, I'm not testing a Benji, I don't care. I've got things that torture a printer a lot more here. And this thing came out great. So again, as always, I'm gonna do a short version of my review. And then for the people who wanna see the machine in action, see what it looked like came, coming out of the box, uh, and hear me talk about my experience with the printer, stay tuned because after this little quick hitter, I'll go much more in depth into the machine and my experience. For the quick hit version, uh, this is basically a souped up Ender 3, uh, the way like an EPAX X1 is to a Mars or a Photon, you know, with all the bells and whistles, the construction, everything. Well, that's how this, this AS5, A5S by JG Aurora is compared to an Ender 3. So basically what I'm trying to say is it'll basically print the same as a really dialed in Ender, much like the Lot Max did as well. But this comes with a much prettier package uh, an SD card that's by SanDisk. Like I've never seen a branded SD card before on any printer, resin, or FDM until I got this thing. I when I opened it up, I was like, "Wow, it's a real US, USB stick and card and a memory card. That's nice." Uh, again, for the quick hit, it is is literally just a souped up Ender three. Uh, easier construction, easier leveling, easier just use in general. Uh, aesthetically a lot better looking. Like I said, more quality components, I think are a little higher quality, but the same way in resin printing that even though an EPAX is the best built of them all, it still effectively prints, you know, a photon of Mars, you know, and an EPAX all basically print the same. They're all using the same technology and the longer 30 as well. So what you're paying more money for is quality of life. And, and, and this machine has it in spades. And that's all I'll say about it in the short review. Also, it's a much bigger uh, build size than my Ender 3. I didn't really realize it as I was putting the machine together. I was like, man, this thing looks pretty big. And the build plate is way bigger. It's 300 and, and the Ender is only 220. So this, this compares to the, actually the bigger Creality machines. But uh, so the nice big build plate is actually good. My Ender, I never felt really too small. But there were a couple of pieces of terrain I went to print from the Chlorhaven Kickstarter I backed. And there were some that I wanted to blow up a little bigger but bigger wouldn't have fit on my Ender 3. So it's nice to have this bigger build volume on the uh, on this JG Aurora. So uh, again, for the people of the shorter attention spans, don't want to see the machine in action or any of that stuff, I would say if you have the money and you want you know better quality of life, a better built machine, an aesthetically more pleasing machine with I think some higher quality components and a big build volume, uh, I think this machine's pretty good when there's a really hard look. And with that, let me dive into a little bit of a deeper review. So what I want to do here is uh, I'm going to cut to a clip of, of assembling it a little bit. You don't need to see me build the thing because it's, at, it's literally, I think it was four screws to attach the, the uh, top housing to the, to the bottom. I think that was it. And I did have to connect some cables. So I'll, 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 let's cut to a clip of that. Okay, so you saw that. I don't think you need to actually see me screw all the screws in. Besides, uh, unless you like like slapstick comedy, because I did fumble around and drop the screws a few times, so not that exciting. So, for this in-depth part of the review, one thing to note is that on the Z-axis, there's actually two rails, uh, and and it's very stable. But when it comes to the prints, I didn't get. Now my Ender Three is very dialed in. I've tinkered with it, and messed with it, and and the same with my Lot Max. Well, it came kind of that way out of the box, actually, the lot max when I did it. But this thing out of the box prints as nicely as a dialed in Ender 3. So that's a big plus without any of the fiddling or tinkering because the way it comes to you with the top part assembled, machine assembled, I believe, unless you get one with like a manufacturing error, you get one that's basically perfectly square. And the way you screw the screws in, there's not margin for error where you could screw it in and, and you're going to throw that off. It only fits in one way. So I think the design is good in terms of it takes out some of the guesswork of, of actually having to make sure you assemble your printer properly in order to get good prints. When you assemble this, it's assembled properly. 
Uh, and that literally only takes, I think, 10 or 15 minutes max. It would have been quicker for me if I didn't keep dropping the screws because I got the fat fingers and the screws are little. Uh, so assembly, okay. If anyone cares, packaging was really good. You know, I, I tend to find packaging is good on most of the machines I get. So for whatever it's worth, packaging was excellent. The box was huge, by the way. This is a big printer. And, and I'm going to have a clip coming up later where I show it, you know, in operation. And I'm standing next to it. I'm a big guy. You can see this printer is huge. Uh, it's got the big build volume, which is great. It runs a little quieter than my other FDM printers. Now, in the clip where you see it running, you won't really hear it. I didn't do audio for that part of it running because I, I do have like six other printers in the room. So it'd be hard to discern what was coming from that JG Aurora printer. But trust me on this, it is a, a quieter. It's the quietest of my FDM printers so far. So that's a plus for whatever it's worth. I mean, most people aren't printing by their bedside anyway, but it is a little quieter. Um, print quality. So I'm going to have, as always in my reviews, you know I'm going to give you up close, high res photos of, of all the pieces of this model. And you'll see there was a tiny little bit of warping on one of the legs here. When I printed it, uh, I actually, it was my fault, I had it right next to an open window. And if you see my video on what can cause warping, uh, one of them is drafts. And I, I did, I had no choice when I first set it up, I put it right next to an open window. So my bad, the printer had nothing to do with that tiny little bit of warping. I then uh, closed the window and everything's been fine. The other thing I noted, and you'll see in the pictures, the filament that came with it, they always give you, you know, filament with a printer, right? The filament that came with this orange stuff, and it printed out okay, but I wasn't super duper impressed with the printer. I, like I said, it's like my under three quality. You know, I was hoping for something out of the box, like kind of like perfect-ish. I'm always hoping for that. When I switched to my Eson PLA Plus filament, I have to say, the print to me in the gray filament, the Eson PLA Plus, to me is noticeably better, and you can judge for yourself in the pics, than this orange filament. So once I started, it's like uh, feeding a car better gasoline, I guess. Once I started feeding it a better filament, the results were better. Like, I, I think this, especially this top piece, because it's got a lot of thin parts. So, of course, a thin spire like this here, you'll see in the pictures, never going to come out perfect on FDM. I mean, it just, it just can't happen. But it doesn't come out much better than this on FDM. I, how it handled the tiny thin spires and the tiny thin curving uh, moon symbol at the top here, I was very impressed. And you'll see from the pictures, the rest of it just came out actually gorgeous. So I'm pretty excited about this printer. Um, with all I know now about printers, I was kind of expecting, you know, I compare everything to my Ender 3 uh, and my Lot Max, which prints exactly basically the same as my Ender 3, which is totally dialed in. So I don't think in terms of prints itself, you're not going to do much better than Ender 3 that's 100% dialed in, perfectly built. But the printer like this, you don't, you don't have to do any of the work to get it there. Out of the box, just assemble it, level it, which it has a level assist. So what's level assist mean? It means that the nozzle goes to the four corners, you press a button, for one, it goes to the first corner, so there's four buttons for the four corners, and then there's a fifth one for the center. So it doesn't level for you. It just moves the nozzle into position. But I actually find that a lot easier than on my Ender where I have to move it myself. It's, it, it doesn't sound like much, but it, it, level assist is the right word for it. it. It does assist you leveling, and it helps a lot. And I'm actually going to make a video on leveling because I still see people with a lot of leveling problems. And I know there's a lot of videos on leveling, but I'm going to give it my own take anyway. So leveling this was very easy with the level assist. I got it level, got it printing. And like I said, this was, ugh, this was my test print. I'm not doing a little benchy. I'm not doing that little crap. You know, if a printer can print something like this, and each part, because I only print at 0.08, each part of this, smallest part was a day. Uh, some of the bigger, more intricate parts were, you know, 30 hours. So I, I tested this basically for a week straight just to make this at a very low layer height so I could really test this machine for you. So again, at the end of this, we're gonna have the close up high res pics of this. I might even, if I have time, I might actually clean this up because I didn't do that. I might uh, take my X-Acto and scrape off the little blobs here and there and all that, maybe even sand a few little pieces and then uh, give it a primer and take some pics that way so you can see what, what, what a real end result is with a, little, with a little cleanup. This has no cleanup at all, just off the bed, and I, all I do is pull the brim off each section because I printed it with a brim. So, uh, 
for my long review conclusion, it, same as my short review conclusion, if you want to spend some extra money to get a larger build volume, which I do think is important if you're doing any cosplay or props or anything bigger, then obviously bigger build volume is better for you. But even for the terrain pieces I do, I can print some of the stuff bigger than on my under three that I wasn't able to do before, so I'm pretty excited. Um, once this review is over, I'm going to get back to printing stuff just for my personal use. Well, the dice power is for my personal use, actually. But anyway, I'm going to print some bigger terrain pieces from Chlorhaven sized up, even a little more than normal, that wouldn't fit on my Ender, so that's good. So it's got the bigger build volume. It's got a ton of quality of life upgrades. You know, the whole machine is enclosed. The, the um, top part of the assembly, which holds the Z-Rods, incredibly stable, incredibly thick and strong. It really feels like really heavy and solid. Like this really feels like a well-constructed machine and if you're gonna pay over $400 for an FDM printer these days, it better be well-constructed, right? Well, this is. So that's, you know, they, whatever they were aiming for, I think they hit the target. It's extremely solid, well-constructed. All the wires are enclosed. All the kind of upgrades you might wanna do on your Ender, this has them all built in already. And what I really like is the way the filament feeds, if you, if you see it in the clip running, uh, the filament is on the side and goes straight up. So you don't never have to worry about wear and tear on your extruder because the filament's going straight up into the hole. It doesn't rub against anything. So it's never going to, even if the extruder was made of the cheapest plastic ever, it won't wear out, crack, or break like it does on the ender because filament's not being you know, um, rubbed along it as it goes. It's going straight up into the hole. Oh, that's the other thing since I'm doing this longer part of the review. When you go to load filament, you just put it in a little bit of the ways and there's a filament in button. You hit the filament in button, it pulls the filament up for you. So you don't have to thread it all the way through. Just a little quality of life, things like that. And, and we want to do a, uh, like a, a pull, there's a filament out button. So once you heat it up, you hit filament out, it reverses the extruder and just pulls the filament out for you. So it's got some really nice quality of life stuff like that, which you have to do manually on the ender or something like that. It's nice. It's just nice. You know, it, it's some people say, well, I don't care. I can just do it by hand. But if you don't have to, you know, quality of life is quality of life for a reason. So all, all the little thoughtful things you could have on this machine, they're in there. All the upgrades that you would normally have to print up for an ender and attach it, it's part of this machine. It's, it's very well thought out. It's well designed. You know, again, print quality is great. But again, I would never say it's better than Ender 3 that's totally dialed in because FDM has its limitations. And I think the difference in price between machines is how easy you can achieve a dialed in type of print. And on this, you can achieve it very easily because the, it basically assembled for you in a factory perfectly square. Then it comes to you with only four screws to put in for you to get it back to that perfectly square situation. So basically all you have to do is level this, which is not very hard to do. And then once it's level, boom, you're going to get you know, your dialed in under three quality prints out of this machine with very little effort. So I think, uh, you know, if you have the money to spend and you want, you know, a better overall experience, you know, for someone new, the easier this stuff is, the better. This kind of machine is very easy on someone new. You don't need to fiddle with it a zillion times. You know, maybe the first time you level, if you've never done it, it might seem a little difficult, but if you watch videos, I think even leveling the first time, you can get it right. So I do think it's a very good machine for beginners. I really like the large build volume on it. Now, the machine, like I said, is big. It does take up space. If that's a negative for people, well, I mean, if you want a large build volume, you have to have a bigger machine. Uh, but it's solid, it's heavy, you know, it's aesthetically pretty pleasing for an FDM printer. And again, print quality is excellent. So that's basically the end of my review. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Stay tuned. I'm going to have a close-up high-res photos of this. Let's look at a clip of it now, a clip of the, of the machine actually running. Okay, and then we'll come back to the pictures. Uh, and then, like I said, if I have time, I'll sand a little prime it and we'll see how it looks. Thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Please check out my other reviews, instructional videos, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, happy 3D printing. So here's the base, came out really nice, uh, you know, from right out of the box. That's a pretty good looking print right there, very smooth. And with part two on top of it also came out really nice, very smooth. You see a little bit of warping on that one leg, as I mentioned. Then the third level I did in the uh, eSun PLA Plus, which looks awesome. 
And then the fourth level, you know, it really, really came out nice. I was very, very happy with this. Let's look at it a little closer. So you can see on the top, the Spire, obviously it's FDM. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect, but I was really happy with it came out. There was very, very minimal to no stringing and looking at it from the other side. And on the two on the chimney came out, you know, about as good as you can get, I think, on FDM. You can see the print generally looks extremely smooth really good details came out nice and again the, the spires and the moon thing i don't think you can really get much better on fdm my, my dialed in ender 3 can't do it any better than that either and my lot max which is really good can't do it any better than that either so overall you know very very happy with the results i got here so again thanks for watching hope you enjoyed please like please subscribe and i'll see you again soon and happy 3d printing everybody